All right, let's look at another example, NO2 minus. And we're going to go ahead and uh, do our Lewis dot structure, which means we need to balance electrons, and that's going to be given by two oxygens in their region group six. And then we've got a negative charge, that's going to count as one. That's going to be 18 valence electrons. So that's how many I've got to play with. And I'll have my nitrogen, I'll put my oxygen here, my oxygen here. I'll bond them together, that's going to be four used up. Now I'll satisfy the outer atoms. And that's each going to need six to make up their octet. So the outer atoms are happy. Now what I've got to do is make the inner, I've oh, sorry, got 16 that I've used. Uh, that means there's two left over. Now I've used up my 18 valence electrons. Now what I'm going to do is make everything have an octet. And that means I'm going to have to take two electrons off one of the oxygens and put them into the bond so that we can have uh, eight electrons on the inner atom as well. And then we complete it by putting the brackets on the outside and the negative charge. So that's what the Lewis dot structure would look like for NO2. So that's part A. Let's look at part B, which is the overall shape. And to do that, what I need to do is figure out how many electron groups I have around the central atom. Now here I've got uh, two atoms and an electron pair. That's uh, three electron groups. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my chart, which, which I'll be given on the test. And I'm looking for specifically the one that has three X's around it and that's going to be the trigonal planar one. This will best describe the overall shape because it includes all the electron groups and that's what you should do as a general rule when you're looking for the overall one. Look for the one with all X's around it. As many X's as you have electron groups, that's three. So the overall shape is going to be trigonal planar. All right, to do the next part, I'm actually going to have to redraw this, and I'll have to redraw it in accordance with the actual geometry I see on this sheet. And we're looking now at the one that has the two atoms and the electron pair, which would be this one, the angular one. So I can pretty much just copy what I see here. Again, I'm just copying this off the sheet, and this is called angular or bent. And I'll put the bond angles on this one. It's a bit clearer than the other one. And that's going to be 120 degrees for that particular bond angle. Alright, so now we can go ahead and do the hybridization. Now we've got three electron groups for the hybrids, which means we need three hybrids. And we need three orbitals to make those hybrids. And that would be S plus P plus P. So the hybridization is going to be SP2. If you're not sure what all of this is, please go take a look at the hybridization mini lecture for an explanation. All right, next we're going to take a look at the uh, the dipole, the dipole moment of the molecule. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the, the lone pair here. I'll just draw the same diagram. I won't worry about the lone pairs on the outer atoms either. Now we can go ahead and draw our vector diagram. And the vector diagram is going to be 
like this. Since oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, the arrow will go from the N to the O in each case. So those are the, uh, those are the dipoles for the bonds. And now we will put the net dipole in. And it's going to run straight through the center of the molecule, straight through the nitrogen and between the oxygens. That's our net dipole right there.